Hi everyone, this is Jesse with Hephaestus, coming at you today with another quick tutorial video. The subject of our video is our feed station hoppers. The R2000 is equipped with two feed station hoppers, which allow for accurate and consistent distribution of your product to the feed system trays. A couple of the key features of the hoppers are their complete construction is 100% food grade, so you don't have to worry about any transfer of product from the hoppers to your product itself. You will see this large gear in the middle with two spring-like objects attached to it. This is known as an anti-bridging mechanism. What it does is as the Ara distributes product out the end nozzle onto the feed trays, you'll see this gear turn and these springs flop around in a circular motion. What this does is ensure uh, that dead spaces do not form from the sticky nature of your product. From here, we have our auger assembly our end nozzle, retaining ring, second retaining ring, connecting cap, and retaining cup. There is an O-ring in here, but we'll get to that in a minute. Let's start our general disassembly. From here, we'll start off at the front. The front can be orientated by the position pin and the front tab. As you notice, these are not on the back. So this orientates the front. We'll start from the front, work our way to the back. Once we remove our retaining ring, it is not uncommon for the end nozzle to come out with it. These are two separate pieces, so be sure to pull them apart and clean them accordingly. Once you have these off, we can move to the back of the hopper and remove our second retaining ring. Once you have the retaining ring off, the entire auger assembly can be simply pulled out, but if you feel any binding, it can be threaded out. Now, the anti-bridging mechanism we do not recommend to be removed as it is very difficult to reinstall. The housing and the anti-bridging mechanism can be saturated with isopropyl or ethanol, allowed to sit or soak for five minutes, and then come back with high pressure soap and hot water and air dried. Let's go ahead and move over to our auger assembly and get a little deeper with this. Now, your general parts are the actual auger, the retaining cup, the connecting cap, and a small o-ring which sits right in between the auger and the retaining cup. Now, while removing the connecting cap, remember this is threaded backwards, so instead of righty-tighty, lefty-loosey, it'd be righty-loosey, lefty-tighty. So we'll go ahead and turn this to the right, and once we break it free, it'll thread right off. Now, once we have that off, we can go ahead and extract our retention cup. Now, this is just pulled off, but it is not uncommon for the O-ring to stick to the retaining cup. See, that one's stuck. This can be easily remedied by using a pick to pull this out and then washing it with soap and hot water. Everything on the auger can be cleaned with isopropyl, soap, water, um, but we do recommend no oils or anything that has a suspension agent to it which would allow a product to liquefy and kind of stick. Huh. Once you have your O-ring clean, it is positioned on the auger, just like this, right there. But for video purposes, we're gonna use the one I have with that one already retained. So we'll go ahead and push our retaining cup back over our O-ring onto the auger itself. We use our connecting cap to go ahead, now remember this is threaded backwards, so we'll go to the left to tighten it back up. And everything on this is food grade plastic, but it is still plastic, so we urge you to be careful. Don't over tighten, don't wrench down on it, just hand snug. Once we have this all cleaned, we can go back and start our reassembly. On the sides of the retaining cup, as well as the end nozzle, you'll see small tabs right here, which um, lock into small notches that are right here in the threading. So we'll go ahead and insert our auger. Now you can just push this in, but if you feel any binding, it can be threaded in. All right, and then we put those small locking tabs down into the locking notches, and we'll put our retaining ring back on. Now, once we have our retaining ring back on, we can move back to the front. We'll put our end nozzle on, make sure those notches go into the tabs, or excuse me, the tabs into the notches. We'll go ahead and put our last retaining ring on. 
Now this will kind of free up the end nozzle, but once you get one thread tightened on, we can rotate this till those tabs come down into the notches. Once this is snug, everything's clean and dry, it's ready to go right back into production. We do have extra hoppers and all sorts of parts available, so please reach out to your training technician today or call us at our 1-800 number, which is 1-855-434-WEEDS. That's 1-855-434-WEEDS. This is Jesse with Hephaestus USA, signing off.